Heavyweight title on the line. Bernard Hopkins defending for the 11th time. Going against the challenger, Sid Vanderpool. Vanderpool is from Canada. And uh, he is he's, he's a good fighter. He's got good skills, good defense, good puncher. Hasn't really been in with a lot of top-notch opponents. So he'll be tested here tonight by one of the best middleweights around, Bernard Hopkins. Vanderpool's won 23 fights in a row coming into uh, this one tonight with Hopkins. So, uh, but he fights mainly at 168. He got down to take the challenge to fight uh, for the middleweight crown. crown. Do you think the fact that Vanderpool is a uh, southpaw Might will, will pose a problem for Hopkins, although Hopkins is very versatile? Might give him some problem for a little while. It still takes you a while to adjust as we take a look at the tail of the tape. Hopkins, as we said, 35 to 27 by Vanderpool. He's got a 1.83 meters reach to 187 for Vanderpool. 171.9 kilograms to 72.5 in the weight. 185 centimeters to 191 centimeters. The reach goes to Vanderpool. And we'll see if he uses those advantages. In the rules, there's no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref can stop the fight. The fighter cannot be saved by the bell in any round. And in case of an accidental foul, we go to the card after the fourth round. And Vanderpool comes into the ring with Diana Ross. So I'm coming. Sick. The Joel Vanderpool. Good opportunity for him. He's only lost one time. Stopped in the fifth round by Terry Shea back in May of 93. His only loss. And that loss, uh, 93. Was 93. It? Yeah, that's what I thought. That was his first year as a pro boxer. And he last fought. This past January. Wonder why they don't want to get in their corner, because that's not the corner. <laughs> They're supposed to be in the blue corner, and they're in the neutral white corner. South Paul fighter. Wow, look at this. The executioner. One of the best nicknames in the business. <laughs> Bernard, the executioner. Hopkins. That is rather, rather daunting. Well, I'd fight him if he keep the hood on, but uh, once he takes it off, no game. <laughs> and they got smoke and mirrors back there. Or they're cooking something, one or the other. <laughs> As they say, that's awesome. <laughs> this is like one of the better entrances. <laughs> the best middleweight in the world. I guess that's the best way to put it. Oh, he's, a, he's a tremendous fighter. And he's been campaigning to fight Roy Jones Jr. And Roy Jones Jr. has been campaigning to fight as a heavyweight. I don't think they're going to meet up again unless, unless uh, Bernard's going to put on a lot of weight. I was wondering, when you walk into the ring with one of these hatchets, do they give you a credential? I mean, do you get a seat? Or... <laughs> <laughs> do you bring your own hatchet in? I just want to know, want to know these things. I'm a journalist in me. I didn't know you were allowed to bring any weapons I in didn't here. I didn't know either. Ladies and gentlemen, from the Conseco Field House, right here in Indianapolis, Indiana, Eminem Sports, Yurad Muhammad, a promoter in association with Square Ring, Caesars Indiana, Jordan Brand, and Pacers Sports and Entertainment present HBO World Championship Boxing. All the bouts tonight are sanctioned by the Indiana Boxing Commission Chairman, William Kelsey. For this first bout, the three judges assigned at ringside, scoring on the 10-point must system will be Harry Davis, George Hill, and Fred Jones. And when the bell rings, your referee in charge of the action, Bill Page. 
And now, ladies and gentlemen, 12 rounds of boxing for the RBF Middleweight Championship of the World! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white and weighing in at 159 and one half pounds. His professional record, 29 bouts, 28 victories, including 18 knockouts with only one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, from Kitchener, Ontario, Canada, here is the RBF number three right middleweight challenger in the world, Sid the Jewel Vanderpool. And across the ring, in the red corner, wearing black, trimmed with gold, and weighing 158 and one half pounds. As a professional, he has an outstanding record of 36 victories, including 27 knockouts, with only two losses and one draw. From Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, making his 11th title defense, ladies and gentlemen, presenting the reigning and defending IBF middleweight champion of the world, Bernard the Should be a good one. This is a co-feature of the evening. Middleweight title on the line. Sid Vanderpool getting his first shot at a world title. Ready? Against one of the best middleweights in the world, Bernard Hopkins. Vanderpool is a uh, good school, uh, good skills. Good puncher. Got to watch out for the power of Hopkins, though. Vanderpool in the white trunks. Hopkins in the black trunks. Vanderpool going right after Hopkins. Vanderpool's a southpaw. Shooting the jab. Really got in a good left to the body. Hopkins. He's pounded away. He's going after him. I guess that's his strategy. You're fighting the best. You gotta take it to him. Slip the right hand in there. No feeling out for Vanderpool so far. Hopkins has a very good left jab, but he's not hasn't shown it yet. Myard Hopkins from Philadelphia is sometimes called the capital of boxing. There's an exchange. Both guys just winging right now. You can hear the leather slapping on that exchange. Both guys just trying to figure each other out. I think Hopkins is more trying to figure it right now. Vanderpool just going to throw as soon as he gets in there. Bird, no bird. Step Bird back. Hopkins, Step back. Uh, it's known as a very accurate puncher. Makes all his punches count. Very tactical fighter, very smart fighter. And he's been around for a while. There's Vanderpool. And some good ones. Hopkins hitting and holding. <laughs> Look at Vanderpool's body. Very, very elusive. He's trying to land that big shot. In the back of his trunks, he has uh, powerline.com. Must be his website. Something like that. 
Still no jab yet from Hopkins. He's got a good jab. Now Hopkins uh, is taking his time here. He wants to see what Vanderpool is going to give him. Out of position, Hopkins tried to take advantage of it. All right, break it, guys. Break it. Vanderpool uh, showing some wildness here in the first round. Hopkins, the veteran. Final seconds, round one. A couple of exchanges early in this round. That's about it. Just don't wait for him to charge. Let him see the left hand move. I want to see something. Open him up. I want to see your hands move. I want to see your jam move. Let him see that jam. All right? Round two scheduled for 12. Middleweight championship. The champion is the man in the black trunks, Bernard Hopkins. And the pool comes out with a fly, and there's Hopkins. Hopkins said enough of this. <laughs> well, Vanderpool's a little theatrical there. You shouldn't kid around too much no, no. with a guy like Hopkins. I don't think Vanderpool's that concerned just yet. No, he's, he's showing a lot of, uh, a lot of confidence. Uh, Hopkins is the wily veteran. Well, he'll wait for Vanderpool to get a little wild. Hopkins has to pick up the pace a little bit because Vanderpool and his awkward style is kind of in a rhythm, just waiting and then jumping inside and banging away. Don't you believe, Tony, that Hopkins is uh, taking a couple of rounds to check out that South Pole style? I think so. I think he wants to see, you know, give the young man a couple of rounds, see what he's got, and then he'll pick up his pace. Usually the mark of a smart let it go, let it go. if you're in with somebody you haven't Come seen. On. And you know you have time. And you're going to be patient about it. The original opponent for uh, Hopkins was supposed to be Brian Barboza, but he got cut in his last fight. So they brought in Vanderpool. Right, so far he's doing all right. Well, the word on Vanderpool out of Canada is that he, he's, he's a good puncher. He's tough. He just hasn't been in with a lot of uh, well-known fighters. Hasn't been in against, I mean, this is by far the toughest competition he has seen. A quick right hand from Hawkins. Hopkins is uh, picking his spots right now. They almost walked into a left hand. Almost. Oh. Ten seconds remaining in round two. And it's not been a, what you could call, an exciting event so far. Not yet. But it's early. And Hopkins landed a right. Box. Round three. Underway. And coming out jabbing is Vanderpool. Hopkins started to pick it up late in the first round. 
A lot of grease on uh, Hopkins' face. There's a uh, left. It sounded loud, but it was uh, partially blocked by Hopkins. That's something that's a good point you made. It sounded loud. I mean, you see now that uh, Vanderpool is, is probably back at 168. Probably full blown super middleweight. And Hopkins, you know, doesn't put much weight on. He's probably a couple pounds over 160. Then he ducks a punch. Ducks another one. Vanderpool's getting a little sloppy when he comes in now. He's a, he's, he's a bit wild. And a veteran can take advantage of that. Just wait for you to come in. And the crowd is starting to boo. It's a tough crowd. You want to see action here in Indianapolis. This isn't anything to boo, but they just, you know. <laughs> well, they, they want to see uh, Bernard Hopkins open up. And he's uh, feeling his way along here. It's up against uh, an awkward southpaw. Looking for an opportunity to counter. That's a little right hand by Hopkins. <laughs> Vanderpool fighting in spurts. There's a right hand to Vanderpool's midsection. Hopkins starting to find a range, I think. It's also quite normal in boxing never to have seen your opponent. If you ask a fighter, have you looked at films or tapes of your opposition? Uh, unlike other sports where you study tapes. And I think Hopkins has, has seen and done all the study he needs to do in the first couple of rounds. Left hand from Vanderpool. Oh, oh a takedown. They wrestle themselves to the floor. Hopkins upset as Vanderpool roughhousing. I ain't going to get him mad. And he's speaking to uh, Billy Page, the referee, about it. No, uh, no relation, I might add. Uh, Hopkins, uh, good man. I don't want to get Philadelphia fighters too upset. Counter right hand to Vanderpool's midsection. Ten seconds remaining here in round three. All right, I got Hopkins a bit upset getting wrestled to the canvas. No respect. There you see Vanderpool trying to get, <laughs> he tried to protect himself and grab Hopkins and they both went down. And here's Hopkins protesting. I think Hopkins is starting to turn the corner to slow down Vanderpool. Round four, scheduled for 12 for Bernard Hopkins middleweight title. The 11th defense. Hopkins up top. Vanderpool down to the body. Mostly, there's a short right chopping hook from Vanderpool. Lanced off Hopkins' jaw. Vanderpool, Vanderpool's a physical guy. He is. He should be trying to push Hopkins around, but. Hopkins, Hopkins is the one pressing the action right now. Remember the first couple of rounds he was walking around, backing up, seeing what the guy had. Now he's going after him. Slam, I, slams the right hand against uh, Vanderpool's head. Now I can see, I can, I can see Hopkins go to the body because I think that's where he's going to chop down Vanderpool. Vanderpool's the bigger fellow. I'd like to see a little more movement out of Hopkins too. 
a head little bit more movement. I think that head would, movement or, or foot movement. Foot movement, uh -huh. because I, I think that would uh, throw Vanderpool off, because Vanderpool's fighting in spurts. Yeah, and you get him off balance, I think he could then be in trouble. Break it, break it, break it, break it. My break, my break, guys, my break. Come on out, come on out. Because he's not real graceful. No, a little side to side, little angles. It's true. I think you, you have to come at a fighter like Vanderpool from angles rather than straighten his face. Because while he's trying to adjust to you, you pop him and you move again and he can't get you. Well, again, the crowd is growing restless. <laughs> it's good action. They just want to see more. Only behind the head. You're losing his head. Well, Hawkins has picked up slowly. Yeah. Picked up the momentum. I think it's because Vanderpool is slowing down a little bit. It's early in the fight. He was going all at him early. Hopkins uh, dropping that left arm. It seems to be the style of a lot of fighters. Nice short inside work by Hopkins. Trying to go to the body. And he's making Vanderpool miss. Yes. Down for action. That's right lead by Hopkins. As we come down to well, Vanderpool walked into a left hand that time. The end of round four. Oh. Round five. Coming your way. Got it even, 38-38, gave uh, Vanderpool the first two rounds, gave Hopkins the last two. Don't drop, he's gone, let it go, let it go, let it go. Break, 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 let it go, let it go, let it go, guys, come on. Uh-oh. Uh, uh, Vanderpool is, he's not a graceful fighter, and, and uh, as we talked moments ago, Hopkins has to get him off balance more by moving. I think he's, he's doing that. He's, He's coming more forward Good right more. Hand. Yeah. Good right hand. He's in and out, side to side. He's picking up the pace. Get off the ropes. Vanderpool should just be bullying him and, pu and punch him to the body and trying to chop him down, but Hopkins just landed a good right to the midsection. I think Vanderpool is now trying whatever he thinks might work. Kind of early to be throwing out game plan A, but if it ain't working, I guess you got to. Hopkins, little by little, taking the fight over. Yeah. Nice, nice punches inside by Hopkins. Nice throw up right hand. Sneak that right yeah. in, right yeah. to the midsection. And, and those body shots are going to. Force Vanderpool to uh, drop his defense. Vanderpool's starting to go backwards. I mean, now he's coming forward, but he, for a second, he's, he's maybe he's a little unsure of himself. Well, yeah, I think Hopkins is starting to uh, adjust and show why he's the best middleweight. I mean, it's, it's nice to have talent, but you have to be able to adjust. And as you said, you see different styles. You, you can fight a softball a little different than an orthodox fighter. And he took a couple of rounds off just to, to learn his style. Vanderpool's awkward. And strong. Well, he bounces uh, some punches off. Hopkins' shoulders. Hopkins is timing his, his, his rushes inside that he's he's smothering uh, Vanderpool. Catching his punches on his on his arms and his, and his side of his body. What, what what is easy to miss is that Hopkins comes in and lands. A good shot to the midsection, and then you get a flurry from Vanderpool. And, and you almost don't see a body shot that Hopkins threw. Right. Hopkins having fun in there now. Final seconds around five. And he got a good shot off. Hopkins taking over here. Here's Vanderpool into the ropes. Close. 
close. Get close. Just don't get careless. Just don't get careless, all right? Okay. Give me a little more, little more force on with the left hand. I want to see a little more force with the left hand. Don't worry about whether it's landing or not. Let him see that hand move. That's what I want to see. All right? You see Vanderpool gets caught by a left by Hopkins. Out of bounds. Doesn't have very good footwork, though. though Hopkins kind of helped him along, but uh, not very, very smooth on his feet. Round six. Halfway point. Bernard Hopkins in the dark black trunks. Known pound for pound as one of the best fighters in the world. The end of that last round, uh, you can see him just smiling and pumping his fist. Said he's getting close. Well, his corner told him, don't get careless. Because he started to get a little uh, overconfident there near the end of the round. Yeah. And I noticed the look on Vanderpool Pool's face. He was starting, had that doubtful look on his face. Not as confident as he was before the bell rang to start the fight. True. True. It's a nice little right on the break. I don't think Hopkins does. He wears you down. All right, my first, and he's uh, allowing Vanderpool to spend himself and, and count. Hopkins known as the executioner, but to me, he just wears you down. Does the right things tactically well. Doesn't mind taking you out late. If he sees an opportunity early, he'll go for it. But he prepares himself to go a long way. Inaccurate. Hey, you're not going to yeah. see. You're not going to see him throw any wild punches like that one. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of body shots from that, Vanderpool. That's Vanderpool's fight to stay on top of Hopkins. Well, hey, you ought to cut the ring off. Yeah, keep him in the corner. He's got the power to do that. That's the takedown, ref. But he's uh, he's not graceful. Hopkins just uh, sliding around the ring. Smooth fighter. Sticks a right hand in, moves out, comes back, slams the left. The fan of pulls midsection. That's what. Uh, Vanderpool's corner wa wants him to do is to jab him. There's a counter left from Hopkins. And Hopkins is keeping himself close enough that Vanderpool can't use the jab. As they say, Hopkins is fighting his fight. Yep. Oh, oh they go down again. There's a takedown. I knew it was coming. There's been more takedowns in this fight than you'll see in a wrestling match. Second round. Final seconds of round six. No doubt about it, Vanderpool. Here we see the second takedown of the fight. Nice chopping punch by Hopkins. If you're going to hold me, I'm going to hit you. But he lost balance and he went down. Look at Hopkins. There's a veteran. He's got him. One, two. <laughs> Couldn't get another one in before the takedown. Hopkins springing across the ring. Round seven. Bernard Hopkins defending his middleweight championship for the 11th time. A couple of right hands from Vanderpool. There's a good left hook to the ribs by Hopkins. He's been doing that for a while. After six, I got it 58-56 to uh, Hopkins. I gave Vanderpool the first two rounds because Hopkins basically was trying to figure him out. It's been all Hopkins since. Oh, 
Vanderpool is uh, is a brawler. He's a brawler. And I think Hopkins. He doesn't care if it goes 12 as long as he wins. I think Vanderpool realizes he can't win a decision, but what do I do to avoid that? And he's got to throw some hard punches. Just he's not accurate. And look at Hopkins spinning him around. Vanderpool didn't move. He just went around him. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and then they do it. I like it. <laughs> you know, these folks are, are booing, but I don't think they understand Bernard Hopkins. Yeah. And what he's doing. Uh, I mean, fight, fight aficionados will tell you that Bernard Hopkins is just slowly picking this guy apart. Now, Vanderpool's powerful. He's powerful. He's wild. And if he happens to land one, then Hopkins uh, is going to be on the, you know, La La Land. But Bernard Hopkins... What was that, a low blow? It's claiming a low blow. I didn't, I didn't see that. Hopkins says, hey, no, he's, he's faking. This is one from left field. The Pacers did lose to Philadelphia today in the NBA playoffs, and Hopkins is from Philadelphia. Uh, maybe the fans are smarter than we think. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. good. Very good point. Oh, good right hand from Hopkins. Good right and oh, Vanderpool man. getting wild, grabbing, grabbing, and hit it. Him. Now it's a brawl. That's what the fans want to see, I guess. Oh, he's picking him apart. Ah, uh, third takedown. Final seconds, round seven. Vanderpool looks more like a light heavyweight. Yes, he does. Oh, just missed it. <laughs> well, they're having words. Now, Vanderpool's wasting time when he could be over in his corner. Well, he knows he has the crowd behind him now. Maybe that's what he needed. There you see Hopkins pounding again. Oh, those are like look like low blow taps. <laughs> they are. Oh, that was. <laughs> but he was hitting him on the side. He was. Second takedown. That wasn't even a World Wrestling Federation move. That was more Greco Roman, I think. Round eight. Hopkins comes out with a flying right hand, so maybe they both don't like each other. <laughs> Uh -oh, uh -oh. We almost had our fourth touchdown. Hopkins is a crafty fighter. And you know what? I'm surprised they haven't broken each other's heads open the way they're flying together. Hopkins starts pounding away, and Vanderpool comes up. Well, Vanderpool will probably come out with a wild flurry off the ropes. <laughs> Both guys slugging now. Vanderpool with those uppercuts. Vanderpool slipping the right uppercut in there. Vanderpool is tough. Slowly coming forward. It's an awkward way of... Oh, both guys. See, look at that whack. Right, both right, walked into right, body break shots. Break break Let's go. Let's go. Glancing right hand from Hopkins. Oh, oh right nice. uppercut from Hopkins. Hopkins has some of his best work. And he's tied up. <laughs> That's a sign of a clever fighter. It's going to make every punch count. Uh -oh. I don't believe Hopkins has been in with a, a strong, rough house fighter like Vanderpool in many a year. Remember, Vanderpool fights mainly at 168. He moved down for this one. Uh, the only thing uh, 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 that 
Hopkins should fear here is the fact that he could wear down in the last few rounds from this uh, constant wrestling and pushing and pressure from Vanderpool. Which makes sense because Hopkins is 35 years old. Oh, nice uppercut by Hopkins. Got in a nice right. Slipped it right in there. Now we're gonna have, that's all we're going to have to be too. <laughs> Certainly two fighters with far different styles. He's coming forward. He's going to hold his ground and now trying to come after him. Hopkins uh, looked like he slipped a little short right in there. Final seconds, round eight. That's it. has a nice right hand right underneath what about those clashes ahead Vanderpool has a big knot over his right eye there's Hopkins again on the inside doing the veteran things to win this fight so far round nine scheduled for 12 world middleweight championship fight Bernard Hopkins pound for pound one of the best in the world in the black trunks challenger from Canada Ontario Canada Sid the Jewel Vanderpool, who is big, strong, tough, and awkward. He's got to cover. The other thing is, too, that we sometimes uh, fail to mention is the fact that Hopkins is great at slipping punches. You know, many times Vanderpool, his punches sound like they really hit home, but they're glancing. Hopkins did a very nice about four punch combination right in the center of the round ring and uh, Vanderpool didn't even fire back. And Hopkins kept moving while he was throwing him, which is a good thing for young fighters. He was spinning around him. Look at that, look, already he's behind him. Nice move by Hopkins, set him up. Nice and jump on him, nice and jump on him. having a good time in there, but he's the one landing the effective punches. Hopkins looking for that golden opportunity to uh, counter punch. No action. This is coming forward by Hopkins and Vanderpool going backwards. I think uh, Vanderpool, after that wild swing that he took, uh, slowed him down a bit. There's a, there's a wild uppercut. Hopkins uh, almost had him. Hopkins, if he stays on him after he, he, he hits him, he's in position that he can jump right on Vanderpool. Vanderpool's making a rookie mistake in a championship fight of, you know, just dropping your hands and slowly walking away without paying attention. Sometimes it's very, very difficult to, to fight awkward fighters nice like this. Nice combinations again by Hopkins because Vanderpool's not firing back. Lansing right. Pounding. He's chopping away at Vanderpool. It's not a foul because Vanderpool's bending down away from him, but he's not protecting himself. Vanderpool trying to counter. 
But again, uh, Hopkins is good at slipping punches. Final seconds, round nine. Hopkins appears to be having a good time. Oh, yeah. Like I said, he doesn't mind if he has to go 12. All right, so go punches. I'm not looking for one or two big shots, but I'm looking for combination of punches in there. You need the rounds. You need to go strong here. You give these guys a chance to steal something from you. Come here, son. Get them fucking around. Get your goddamn hands moving. Be quiet, Keith. Get your goddamn hands moving. You understand me? I'm getting a little tired of this now. I can't get in here and do it for you. Not that I would any goddamn way. But listen, let's get it done. All right. I mean, what's he got? Nothing. He ain't got nothing to have Vanderpool's seen footwork has been in question. There he comes running in. Hopkins chopping with a right hand. Tries to land punches. Hopkins with a nice shot underneath. That wasn't even a, that was like a false start. He just pirouetted and missed the punch. Footwork's not that good, Dick. <laughs> Round 10. Nice one, two by Hopkins. Watch Hopkins start to spin. That's what we've been doing all night. There he goes. Hopkins is, is slipping a lot of little short punches in. They're doing damage. And if you don't watch carefully, you can miss it. You're doing damage and you're scoring. How do you have this fight scored right now, Tony? They got it 88. 85. For... Uh, I'm sorry, 83. 88, 83. I got Cop Hopkins way out in front. Right hand from Hopkins. That's a slip. Yeah, that's a slip. Because he had just delivered a, a, a good body shot. Very nice. Combination. It's interesting to watch uh, Hopkins how he moves and, and is always giving angles yeah. to Vanderpool. Never letting the guy uh, figure out Hopkins. You see when Vanderpool goes into that whatever it is crouch, I, I, I think he, he, he thinks Bernard's going to stop punching. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> I mean, but gentlemen, but come on. <laughs> nice, right hand. nice right to the jaw of Vanderpool. Vanderpool's starting to get a little sloppy in there. Here comes Hopkins over in the corner. Scoring punches. Nice right hand lead by Hopkins. Took a counter from Vanderpool, but it didn't. It wasn't a stinging punch. Yeah. The point you mentioned earlier, Vanderpool is missing a lot of shots badly. This is, it's Hopkins' defense and the fact that he's getting Vanderpool out of position. Yeah, he 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 has slowly uh, done that. He, he's come on slowly and. He, he's gotten Vanderpool to be even more wild. A short punch is by Hopkins. Right, 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 come on. He makes his count. The end of round 10. You look at Hopkins uh, controlling the action. We've just been informed that uh, might be a little bit of a delay starting the next fight because uh, no one from Roy Jones Jr.'s corner was inside Richard Hall's locker room when he wrapped the gloves. And that's, that's a long-standing uh, tradition in boxing. Someone from each camp, the, the opposing camp, will watch you to make sure you take the gloves right. Well, the commissioners were in there, but you would think they would know that well, no know, one was in there from Jones' and, camp. And also, when the commission says, okay, you guys are starting to wrap the hands, hold on, let me get somebody from Jones' corner. Well, they haven't had boxing here in 
Some uh, 15 years, maybe that's uh, something that you've got to get used to. Shades of Tyson Spinks when uh, uh, Spinks people didn't like the way that uh, Tyson's gloves were wrapped and uh, the takedown. You know, folks, we've had no legal knockdowns, but yeah. we've had a number of takedowns. There's a difference. Yep. Round 11. Not only is Vanderpool losing the fight, he's having a bad hair day now. Braids are all almost in his face now. Hopkins just uh, slammed a right to the midsection. And he's got Vanderpool in the corner. Let's see what he does with it. Uh, Vanderpool's going to bowl his way out. Hopkins yeah. corner told him, close the show. That means, you know, you know, you know, this Billy Page, while he was breaking him up from the other side, Hopkins, Hopkins was, was hit two, three little shots on the on the opposite side. Philadelphia fighter. I wonder if these uh, judges can see these little sly scoring punches. Look at that. Vanderpool backs away instead of staying on him. It's almost his, his resolve is I want to go to distance with the middleweight champ. Again. Now he's uh, being warned about butting. I know when tape comes off the gloves, they'll stop the fight and uh, do something. What are you doing? The hair comes apart. That's, uh, I don't know if that's in any rule book. Yeah, he is having a bad hair, though, isn't it? It's all in his eyes. The referee would just have to cut him off, I guess. And again, it could be dangerous for Hopkins. Final seconds, round 11. <laughs> round 12, the final round. Take down number one. Five. <laughs> Five, six. One, two. Three, four, five. Nard Hopkins appears to be on his way to defending his middleweight championship crown for the 11th time. I got it 118, 10, 111. Hopkins gets Vanderpool over here in the corner. He slips in a couple of body shots. Well, Vanderpool, this is the last round for Vanderpool, so I, I, I would think that Vanderpool has got to just go for broke. I think Vanderpool, he has to, because I know tomorrow he's going to be sore up and down his body. Well, actually, he's going for broke the whole fight. <laughs> There's a nice little chopping right hand from Hawkins. He is so sly with those punches. And the funny thing on my scorecard, the only two rounds that Vanderpool won is when Hawkins just sat back and... Just trying to figure him out. Trying to figure out that awkward southpaw lunging style. There's another short little left. And the rope saved the takedown there. And to Hopkins' credit, he's been able to uh, withstand the uh, lunging and the grabbing. From a stronger fighter, physically stronger fighter. Mm -hmm. Oh, he caught it. Hopkins caught him with a right, backing up. When you look at the legs of Hopkins, they don't look like a middleweight's leg, maybe a welterweight's leg. But he gets a good snap on his punches all through his body. The, the leverage is there. There he is getting those little uh, shots in. Billy Page has been slow on the brakes. And Hopkins was taking advantage of it. And look at that knot over the right eye of, uh, it's like an egg. Half an egg on the, the forehead of uh, Vanderpool. I'm surprised that the heads on it have cut open. They would have been banging each other, rushing in there. 35 seconds remaining in this title fight. Right hand from Hopkins. Numerous shots to the midsection. Machine gun style. Wonder where does Hopkins go from here if it's not Jones? Good question. 
Doesn't put on a lot of weight between fights. He's always around 160. Here's Hopkins in a pose. Oh. Nice flurry. Look the referee. The referee heard the clapping. He thought the round was over because he heard the 10-second warning, which has been going on all night. And that's it. D. Yeah. Referee Billy Page got confused on that. And so it ends. What appears to be a unanimous decision for Bernard Hopkins. And there's a man who's a tough, strong Canadian fighter, but extremely awkward. Bernard Hopkins, the 11th title defense, pound for pound, one of the best. Yeah. There you go. Davis scores at 116 to 112, all for the winner by unanimous decision, and still the reigning and defending middleweight champion of the world, Bernard, the executioner, Hawkins. No surprise there.